Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you wanting to thank you for your leading, guiding. We want to thank you for your safekeeping for us and for being with us. Please guide us as we go through these things, and I pray that it will be a blessing and a help to each one that has come and taken their time to come here, and may it be the means of them being able to share with others. And we thank you for your care in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. You may want to all move forward. We've got a lot of hands-on. Close up. Um, all the ones uh, further to the back, uh, fill up the seats. So, the that, front, uh, front so that you can see, because we are going to go outside and give you a uh, chance to uh, do this yourselves. So before we start, number one, out back, we've got a couple of fire circles that have already been prepared. So we can go out there, and we can build some fires, and we can do it safely. Uh, when we go out into the woods, we want to, and it depends on the area that you live. Where we were at in the northwest, high desert, low relative humidities. Literally, we would clear, if we're going to build a fire this diameter, okay, if it was this size, uh, I would clear literally three feet out all the way around, but the area and a little beyond, maybe like two feet wide, I would dig a hole at least a foot deep. And I would take out all the roots and all the little pieces of burnable material. Take that out, put the dirt back in, put my rocks around it. And the reason for that is um, there was a large fire that was out there in, the, in what they call the Basatan Wilderness. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, um, they the fought it until the snow flew. And I was talking with, because I, w I was a firefighter, wildland firefighter out there. Um, again, like I said, I, I was an EMT. Um, I'm not anymore because I'm not on a district. Same thing with a firefighter. I was a firefighter. I'm not anymore because I'm not part of a fire department currently. Uh, but as a wildland firefighter out there, uh, I ta was talking with Department of Natural Resources about the fire, and he said, "Oh yeah." He said, "We're not done with it." You know, I said, "The snows come." You know, we're we're we'll probably see the last of that. And he goes, "No." He said, "You watch." He says, "We'll fight that fire all next summer." He said, "It won't be as as big, but literally, what they were doing was um, the roots would catch on fire. It would burn underground. It burnt the entire winter underground, and then over here." And over here, they were popping up. Over thousands of acres, they were popping up. And then new things, new fires were starting. So the last thing you want to do is start a wildland fire. Number one, if you do and it's not on your property, you get to pay the bill. Um, and most people don't realize, but uh, it's very, very expensive. Uh, one drop um, from what we call a seat yeah. The seat is a smaller airplane that carries, I think they carry about 800 gallons in one load. One drop was $10,000, OK? Yeah. And they could do that, depending on how far they got to go for refill, they can do that a lot of times a day. I so, would like him to share what he found, uh, what was it, Tuesday evening yes. after we did the camp out Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we need the hand mic so he can. <clears throat> for the recording, if nothing else. So Sunday it was, we left the campsite. And um, it looked like it was out a little bit. Um, my brother, he dig the pit for the fire, so it will be still hot underneath. And um, we went to the we um, went to the campsite. It looked like it was all um, out. Oh, yes, cool. it just, it was cold, but we digged a little bit, and it was still hot underneath. You still had hot, hot embers. Mm -hmm. hot so holes. was it was it enough? You think you could have added some fuels, and it would have started mm -hmm. burning? Some dead leaves, um, some twigs, and we could have had another fire. Okay, and how many days later? Uh, three. Three. Three yes. days later. Okay, so we've seen that like over winter. Yeah, so if it, if it just from a little campfire of a few hours, one evening, one night, 
it was still hot three days later. A couple of the others that had done it, it wasn't. So you need to keep that in mind, especially if you're out in the woods and you're not wanting uh, to be found. I mean, it's one thing if you want to be found because you've gotten lost and you're in a situation that's like, help me out here. You make a big fire and you make it smoky and whatnot, that's, but you still don't want to be burning up the wilderness. Um, so safety and preparedness can be, is very important, but you want nothing burnable. Even here with this, and we're going to build a fire here, but it's going to be very, very little. And we do have an starting. extinguisher just in case. Uh, I guarantee I won't use it. Um, we'll be doing the small basics of what we would be doing just before we have, we put on our little twigs and small bark and then bigger sticks and whatnot to make an established fire. So when it comes to building fires, um, lots of things that we can start a fire with. We're going to kind of do a progression. So we have paper matches. And I'm doing this to show you these are working. I've not done anything to them. There's a whole box of it here. Okay, I got a can of water here as well so that I'm not... So we got a book of paper matches, okay? We're going to go to the next level. We've got a small wood match, okay? So obviously it's working. By the way, if you hold a match like this, it's going to burn your fingers. Mm -hmm. I have seen uh, when I was doing um, meetings with some of the youth on teaching them this, um, I give them one of the big matches and I have them strike it on a rock to light their fire. They strike it and they hold it like that and then they freak out because it burns their fingers and drop, mm -hmm. they drop their match, their match goes out and now they don't have a fire. So that is important okay. if you only have one match. So um, now what Matt's, um, oh before we go to that one Matt, let's go to this one. Okay. So this is, so the, the first, well actually do this one first Matt, what kind of progression. So we start out with paper matches, we went to some strike on box matches, now we've got a, a strike anywhere match. Which I'm tipping it a little bit because I want it to burn up the stem. But then I'm going to put it back like this. You can shelter it from the wind and put it in your fire. Um, so now you can get um, waterproof matches. So we could take the match, and I know you probably can't all see my can, but I'll do it this way. You can see that everything's dripping and running, okay? So we take a, the waterproof match, let me get it off your hand. Shake, get the water off my hand. I did that so they could see it. Okay. It's awesome. It looks pretty good. Okay. It's only one problem with those. Well, we'll, we'll show them that in a minute. Okay. So we're going to show them a couple other kind of matches. Um, the next one, this, you may need a different box. That one's getting this really box old. Is, yeah, let me use the Okay, this is this what's called a hurricane match. Whoa. So it burns a little longer. Um, but when it gets to the end of its flare, it doesn't want to burn the wood. It goes out. And it kind of goes out. Now what I have here is, I guess you could say, Pertner Torch. Um, this is a lot more of a hurricane match. So the idea is it burns longer so that it... Um, and by the way, this is also a waterproof match. We could have put them in the water and they would have done the same thing. Um, you know what? Don't worry about it. You don't want them. Okay? I'll give you that much secret. So, here's the story. Ah. Yeah, we want that one. We want this one. Um, this one. Remember, these were the ones we dipped in the water and lit. The waterproof match. Yeah, so, you're, walk, you're, how, you're on your hike. You fall in the creek. Open the door. Open the door and let some air through. It's getting smoky in here. We're not done yet. Okay, so you fall in the creek or it's pouring down rain. We have our waterproof matches. Okay. There's this, the others. Here's this box. Okay. Swimming through the so creek or whatever. You plowed through the creek. You got... And I'm not going to do that to these. I want these to save for samples. I don't want to destroy them. That was an expensive box. So now, our waterproof matches. 
Are any of these going to work? Go ahead and do this. We got this box. It's not waterproof. Not waterproof. It's not going to work. Obviously, the paper matches. They're done. We got our strike um, strike on box only. Waterproof matches. Maybe you better try another match. So what's the problem? Why won't they work? They might work, but your striker is wet. Can the striker on the box is wet. Okay. So we could give me. Can I give it a try? Sure. Come on up here, grab one of these. Give me one of the matches. If by chance you happen to have a box that was dry, dry. Okay, it's still going to work. The matches are waterproof. Problem is they don't tell you that that's not waterproof. Go ahead. So go ahead and see if you can. Yeah, I always believe in just giving things and uh, a try, you know. An independent, uh, so that you know it's not Matt just making it look like it. Okay, so go ahead. Now grab another one. <laughs> grab another one out of there. Yep. That's okay. Set the matches, set this box out, but that box is garbage. We will throw that away because even if I let it dry out, you're not going to get to start now. Just so to prove that you can light a match, Jake, go ahead and strike it. that match on this box that didn't go swimming. Okay. So, okay, so we just proved that you can strike a match. Here, I'll right. through that. They're waterproof. Yes. Problem is the box. The not. box is not. And so there are things like a plastic bag that you could put it in. But you know how many Ziploc bags, ladies? Have you ever had a Ziploc bag fail in the fridge and the freezer and leak and make a mess all over it? Anybody not had that happen to them? So the point is, matches. We do not carry matches in our packs. Okay. One more. Yeah, the paper ones obviously don't. One more thing. I've had Lighters. people say use a lighter. Early on, many, many, many years ago, I thought this was a great thing and it would work. I had mat I had lighters in my pack, I had lighters in the in the glove box of the truck. One time I needed to start a fire, so I went to the glove box of the truck, grabbed my lighter. Nothing, nothing. It would not light. Couldn't it was one of those you could see through. I get to looking at it and I'm like, that's a brand new lighter. It's empty. So I pull out another one. It's empty. You know what happens to these things? Evaporates. They evaporate. The fuel evaporates. You notice this one right now? Oh, now it's not going to light for me. There we go. Notice that? This one is almost empty. It so doesn't take it is, long. It won't take it, long. As soon this. as you run out of fuel. Okay, so there is a trick, and if you are stuck with only a lighter, notice the spark. Well, if I can get it to do it. Okay, the sparks that are there without the lighting. Okay. You could use that, but you'd better be really good at what you do. You can use that. It's way easier. So, what we want to do, number one, we're going to teach, have you guys work with doing what's called a one match fire. We'll let you use the matches. You can strike it on the box or a rock. Or rock. Um, the purpose is learning how to do this to be able to... Because sometimes Strike. they fail. Yeah, and I did that on purpose. Notice how I'm striking it here? All the white is gone. I was striking it straight down on, on there. All of the white on the tip, which is your strike anywhere, got some here, are, uh, is now ground off. You want to get your match to strike on a rock, your strike anywhere match, put your finger on it, put it down close where sideways. the sideways so that the red and the white part can be rubbed. Okay, so the reason we do the one match fire is when you, when I can give you two things. I can give you one match, something to strike it on, and a knife, and you can go out and find something to start a fire with. 
If you can accomplish that, then you can start other type of fires. But we're also going to teach you at this point some demonstrations here of how to, what to look for, number one, where to look for it, and how to make it a whole lot easier. But if you can master that one match fire, then when it comes to making an easier fire, it, it just becomes, it, it's no problem. Trust me, with doing some of this, um, in fact, what we might do before we light some right. of these, we might get some volunteers to come up. I think you need to split that pile in half. I th yeah, I, I think it is a little big. never use that much. Okay. I mean, you can. It will make it a lot easier for you. So, um, pitch sticks. Now, out west, we used to just go get a pitchy piece of stump and take our axe and break a chunk off. It's not quite as easy out here. It's hard to find them. I actually bought those from Kroger's, but it seems like they no longer have them. But I found, by the way, we're, we have lots of these and we are going to give you one. Everybody's going to get a pitch stick. So I actually found this. Amazon. Amazon, by the way, and it's called Fat Wood, F-A-T-W-O-O-D, Fat Wood. Um, you don't need a 10 pound box like this. This is more than, in all honesty. This will last a long time. Yeah. I mean, the piece I carry with my pack. But is, you have to use it sparingly. You, because if you make a pile that big, you're going to run out just in a couple of times. So what we do with, the, with this pitch, and I've already got some here for samples. But I'm going to scoot that aside. So what, what we do. If you whittle, if you carve, your knife's dull. It is dull. You want to do that? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, we end up with larger, bigger shavings, which is good. This but is not might right be now. step two, but we need something finer. Yeah. You want that? Put so, your knife 90 degrees to your wood. Yeah. We're not carving. We're shaving it. Put it 90 degrees. Yes, there you go. <laughs> so the amount that dad had up here, it works, it's good, it's easy to start a fire. Personally, when I carry my stick, that right there is about the amount you want. By the way, you do not want to do this straight on the ground. The dirt will eat your little shavings and you will lose them. You need to have a, a flat rock or a big piece, piece of, of bark. Wood. So now I'm going to put out a, a couple of shavings. I don't want to burn down the building. Um, okay, so we need a volunteer you want me to who's, that first? who's never used a striker. You want to volunteer? You've never seen or used one of these things like this? Okay, I want you to come up here. I'm going to show you so you have an idea what to do with it, but then I'll have you light that because I want it to be obvious. So what we do with this, this is the striker part. This is like a flint, okay? We put this at an angle like this, okay? And we make some sparks, okay? So what you're going to do no, I'm not going to start a fire from the from that. Okay, so what you're going to do is direct your sparks onto that by striking this and trying to to light that. Get down close enough to where it'll. Yeah, you want to get close yeah, and to put it. Put your thing on a on an angle. You got to give it some force. Hey, girl. You got sparks. <laughs> um, try putting your striker right down on there so you can direct them down into it. Underneath is where you want almost. to Almost. Yeah, it almost went. There. Did you do the pop right now? No. No. Okay, so <laughs> let's pause for, yeah, go ahead and use your little, okay, to show that it is possible, okay. There you go, go, girl. Go, 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 
It takes practice. Okay, now I want to. Let me show you that this one is possible to do. Okay. It takes practice. It takes practice. <laughs> and I'm not trying to make you feel foolish. I'm just showing I wanted to. We want is, everybody to be able to do this. A longer, longer line of, you know, when you were striking it. Huh? Yes. He, he did that longer. Yeah. Harder, maybe? Start from the start. So, from the okay. He's noticing your technique versus hers. So tell her what. What she did versus the, what you did. So takes a lot the angle, it, yeah. a lot of force. It's the and angle, a lot of force, and it's the length. Yeah, you don't want to just a short little strike. Although I can do it with that. Okay. Pop it out, leave her some. I've got more over here. Okay, so we'll let you stay up here with us. We want to show you another method. Years ago. I'm talking, oh my. Can we, yeah, yeah. can we see her do it? Can we see her do it? Yeah. Sure. Well, try, we'll try it again. I'll get some more shavings out I there. got more. Oh, you got more right there. Uh -huh. Okay, now that she knows long, slow, hard. Down low. Uh -oh. There you go. Turn it, yeah, turn it that way. You'll push your spark then. She's getting a good spark. Just got to get it directed. There, almost, almost. Almost. There. there you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So I'll tell you what, let's, you're getting catching on to it, so let's use you as a demonstration. So years ago, I had a guy tell me, take cotton balls and put Vaseline on them. But he didn't tell me how for a fire starter. But he didn't tell me how. So what I did, we, one can. Um, we only got one can. We'll have to, you want to dump that. I'll need that in a minute. So what I did was I went home and I got me a container of petroleum jelly Vaseline, okay, which is just, you know, it's brand new petroleum jelly there. And I got me some cotton balls and I got mama's kettle and a spoon. And I, I scooped it out and I put it in the kettle and I dumped in the cotton balls and I stirred it all up and I came out with this, okay? And I tried to light it, it didn't work. Well, I found, played with it, found some techniques. What I discovered later, he said, you were supposed to just rub a little Vaseline on the cotton ball. Well, I've tried that, it does work. But it, nothing like this works. So I'm gonna. So these, and we're gonna make some Vaseline cotton balls here in just a couple of minutes. But we're gonna show you how to do it. Um, so if you just take the cotton ball and try and light it, I can guarantee you'll never light it. It's too dense. You grab it. So here's the thing. We want to teach you how. To have reusable. Your, if you carry, if you carry a small, frayed out. Like if you if you carry this, you can only carry so much with you. I can't. You notice you didn't see any of this in my pack. I do have a pill bottle, a little smaller than this one, which I forgot to tell you about. This is the charcoal from the last meeting we were talking about. So, and there's a phone number on here. Since I'm on it, so the phone number charcoal for Charcoal House. house. I forgot to give this a bit ago. So it's 888, so three eights, 888, 264-5568. They're in 264-5568. Anyway, I carry a bottle this size and a couple littler ones in my pack full of cotton balls. To use, you but you can only want, carry so much. You do not want to use those cotton balls for just like your normal. You're out in the woods and you want to light a fire, so we use a cotton ball. No, use another method. Use some jute twine or some bark off of a, a tree. Why? Something besides that, because you can only carry so many of these. And those, if it's pouring down rain on you and you have everything is soaking wet, you'll get that for light. 
So don't and use, like don't use those up when you don't absolutely need them. Use them when you need for them. For wet weather. When for wet. Um, wet. So that this will burn for about 20 minutes. This, this is, is so um, this is jute twine. That gives you enough time to So jute twine so that you can get it to burn your fire to go. You take the jute twine. What I did just to save time is I pulled it apart already and I frayed it up real good. I mean, I just kept pulling it apart till we got it real small. And of course, what we would do if we were, uh, what we're when we're going to be making fires outside is when you get like these, uh, these shavings to light, then you're going to start adding your small, uh, small shavings of bark and dry grass, very dry grass or leaves and your small twigs um, to go from there. Have everything collected before, before you, you light. Apart. Okay, mm, yeah. so you can see how quickly and easily that starts. So what we're saying is there's lots of options. We carry this in our pack because we can use it for shelter building, but then after we've used it, if we, we take it with us, we cut, cut it off, take it with us and save it, we and it uses for this. Can we see Paula use that to start a fire? Mm -hmm. What's that? Can, can we see Paula use it to yeah. start a fire? Yeah. Sure. Paula. I was going to get her on a cotton ball, but go ahead and try it on that. Than that, I think. Um, that should work. It just won't burn as much. Okay, there you go. Set your striker right down there. Try jumping your striker over. Yeah. Yeah. Get that angle. Um, that's messing you up. Let me undo that. Okay. Make a little more string for you. Okay. Strikers do wear out, so make every strike count. Okay. Tip, you're getting your... So what she's doing wrong is she's trying to push it like this. You've got to kind of tip it forward and drag it this way or even extra, this... I prefer to have all that extra. This extra back here. But... The angle that you want this metal is like this. So that then as you throw your spark, but if you go straight, I mean, I can get it, but even I have a hard time getting a spark this way, but this way, okay, you can get a, get a spark. To get that angle, there you go. See, it's all in technique. Okay. And also, when you learn these things here, you need to use them for, like, if you're building a fire in your stove. Practice with it. Um, you know, just don't do the normal For a wood stove. Or, for wood stove or whatever. Yes. Just use them as practice. It's good to be able to have the skills and whatnot. Um, because I carry on me um, a flint rod. Of course, I normally have a knife. The other day, I had, um, that was Sunday, actually. I was out here, I was walking along past here, and there was a guy out there at the fire ring, and there was no fire going. He says, your time starts now, you have two minutes to build me a fire. I'm like, what? He says, your timer starts now. So I ran, I went and got some bark, I grabbed some dry grass, I went and I found me a flat stone, I had a pick stick in my pocket, I got off some shavings, a minute and 35 seconds I had flame. So, it takes practice to be able to gather your materials, and I had gathered everything up to establish fire point. He was just looking for flame, I found out. Yeah. So here's the cotton ball. Go ahead and see if you want to get all this little fuzzed out area there. You direct your sparks right into that. Oh. So the, <laughs> it, it takes practice. So the cotton ball will burn. We're not going to let it burn the whole thing because it's... put one on a sidewalk in a downpour in Washington and it burned for 20 minutes in the rain. Wow. That's when we, we said, okay, we've got to find pill bottles or something. Pack these in and take them so that we have these when it's raining. By the That's way, why we only use it when it's raining. I used the glove. It's just a leather glove, but I used the glove on this because this is oil. And I didn't want the oil on my hand with the flame because 
I'm really, I am careful. I mean, it, you, you see us put it out with our fingers. It's like, no, that's, that's no problem because it's not oily, but this was oily. So I didn't also, want that. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you carry these, you have good. Uh, yes. This is a strike force. Okay. You cannot, find you cannot get you the strike force anymore. Like There's one. different types yeah. on, on. You can get. This is a Walmart one. Walmart. Obviously. What's the name? This is from Walmart. Striker. It's a striker, flint striker. Yes. You can see the difference in it. Um, this, is this isn't going to last long, but Melanie loves it because it's so little she could slip it in her pocket and she's not carrying. These are a half inch rod. So this, this right here has like twice the amount on here. I've been using this thing for. Oh yeah. I'm just curious about the metal. Is it magnesium? No. What? No. Let me get the, the magnesium metal. striker. That's a certain metal. Okay. Awesome. Grab the magnesium. So we are not a fan of magnesium fires. Um, we've Matt's got a sample. Oh. Yeah. Here's the bottles we carry for. These are literally ones that snap together two ways. Cotton balls. So like a pill bottle, stuff a throw. By the way, this is an awesome little tip. This is duct tape wrapped around the pill bottle. No, it's not holding the bottle together. No, it's not to hold it. It's, it's just to have some duct tape in your pack. The purpose of oh. Another type of striker. I don't like these as yeah, well. But what's that? Does that one have like the Yeah, it looks like a hacksaw yeah. blade. This right here, this is one of an older magnesium one. You can get magnesiums from like Harbor Freight that has like that much magnesium and a little striker. Yeah. Is, that, is, that, is that good? You don't have it. Or what? So. He's asking if it's good. Um, not not really. This one's built. It's got magnesium, flint, and some wood there. The wood is not pitch. It's just wood. Okay. It's more for a, like a one time. The problem with magnesium. It burns very, very hot for a very short time of short oh, time. Okay. And so, in all honesty, this would be my number one choice, the pitch, the pitch wood. Okay. And to carry a piece of this in your, um, to carry a piece of this in your pack would be worth way more than to have one of the big one of these things with magnesium or even the magnesium okay. block. So here we go, I'm gonna light the magnesium. Oh, if I don't tear the you that metal. It all over. See how it flashed? Flared up? Yeah. Now it's gone. And it's gone. Okay. So you so have awful dry leaves or something to catch. You get a flash and then it's over with. It, it's yeah, I used up quite a bit of that just to do that. Um, do not carry magnesium. The jute works, I would say, better than the magnesium. Way better. Um, we found these, um, and I've got a, several of them over here. This one, I'm not. Matt's got one that he's claimed for his own. They. Um, I'm going to use this one. Okay. Um, they work well. He's going to give you some sparks. So do it again so they can see. Put some more sparks out there. So it can put out a lot of spark. Uh, it's basically the same thing as what this is here. This was called a strike force by Gerber, but you can't find them anymore. They just they quit making them. These are old. Um, they have a little pocket on the back of them. So we, we cotton balls. tuck them full of cotton balls. I get three cotton balls in the back end of it, so that's why. But so with this, here's the thing. These work. Um, you have to have something to strike them with. You better have a, like the back of your knife. Don't use the blade. Yeah, if you don't have to, don't use the blade. Use the back. I just played with this knife earlier. Where's your so I can. Those are brand new. I took the file to the back of my knife a little earlier. Mark, what is that thing she wants to know? That this? It's a, it's a uh, feral rod. Feral or ferrous? Ferrous. It's ferrous. a ferrous, ferrous rod. rod. By the way, that pile over there, we have these we can sell to you. They're, we are making a tiny bit of money because all of the everything else and everything else we give you is, is 
at our expense, so I am saying I'm making a bit of money. So if you want to find them elsewhere, um, you can go look and get them on eBay. Um, but we've got them at ten dollars a piece. Okay. And the thing is, though, you can go to Walmart. You can get this for five dollars. So, so there's a lot of point difference. The back of my knife, I squared it with a file, and it does. So you can use your knife. I tried my knife before I kind of evened it up a little bit. Because it was kind of rounded. Because it was the edges were rounded so people don't hurt themselves on it. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work, but obviously that works. Um, so we're gonna we want to do a demonstration of by the way, one thing I didn't do and I should have before we got rid of the water, but that's fine. We could get more, but literally I could take this. Should we do it? Yeah. Sorry, Go get me some water. So what are you, what are you doing I have a okay, um, microphone. Okay, he's got it in the sink in there. I had saw on uh, social media. I know this is a little kind of bigger, and and it you know very well it, it would take up some space also. So it doesn't necessarily have to be for what it is that we're presenting now. But I did, did see someone take a can, like a old green bean can or something like that, and they they filled it up with uh, toilet paper, and then they took some uh, alcohol and poured it in it, and then they had a fire that they said would last for, uh, I think, like several hours, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, is that true? Um, yes. Oh, It'll work fairly much, well, how but... How much can you use that toilet paper versus... How much toilet paper and alcohol can you carry with you to head for the woods? I mean, that might work at home if you've got nothing else, but I could right. find other things that would be better if I were at home or in your home. I mean, look around. I mean, worst case scenario, you could find a... a there's got to be some wood someplace. If nothing else... If I were in a bad enough situation, I'd look for an old chair and break it up and, and find a kitchen knife and make me some shavings and burn the chair. So cotton ball, this is one that I have not lit, so it's just I just took it out of there. We've got our water here. You can see it's right up there deep. We're going to get it. Dip it in, but see, remember, Vaseline kind of rejects and repels water, right? So I am going to shake it off a little bit. So you just swam across the river, now you need a fire to Now you need a, out, right? yeah, you, you if, swam across. It's raining on you, you just had to cross a river. And everything's wet. And all of your materials around you are wet. You're cold, you want to get dried dry out. You can. It's a little bit harder to get it to go. I You're shooting over it. Yeah. Push it down a bit. Before, Mark. I was wondering why you were flattening it before you put it in the water. It works that way. Okay. I'm just trying to get it. He's got to get it to flare. It's harder to get it to fray out. You've got to get those fine fibers, the little pieces. Because that's what. That, water off of it. that one has uh, Vaseline in it. Or? This is yeah, a Vaseline cotton ball. Cotton ball that they've got. Just like the one she lit. There you go. So notice it little sparking a little bit there as it's just still doing a little bit. That's because it's wet, but it's still working. Yeah. So even after it's raining outside and you went swimming to get across, you're still able to start a fire. And that'll burn for a while so that you can dry out whatever you're trying, to, your tender that you're trying to get to burn. What are you doing? Who's going to start one while it's floating on the water? We've done that as well. We've played with these things a lot, experimenting, and it's possible to. The hardest thing is just directing. Getting the, the sparks. sparks. You've got to learn to direct the spark, and that's it's difficult. There you go. So there we go. You're welcome to come and look, but we've got fire burning on water. 
By the way, it takes three things to make fire. Anybody know what that is? Yes, that's one. Oxygen is one. Fuel, it, that's two. And heat, yes, there's your third one. So heat, fuel, and oxygen. And even here in the presence of water, we still had the, uh, we had it working. Okay, we need to dump the can of water again. I know you did. And I, so what I want to show you is how we do the, um, how we do up the cotton balls and we'll, so we can, And you know what? I brought it in here, but I don't know where it went. I had a paint stick in here. Uh, use one of your paint sticks. Huh? Use one of your paint sticks. Oh, use the paint stick. OK. So um, we're going to take the Vaseline. Paint stick would have worked better, and I had it here. Start the stove. The striker didn't seem to work when I was messing with it earlier. Okay. You need to have a respect for fire, but not a fear. Yep. Okay, so we've got our Vaseline in there. I didn't clean that out just for sake of time. We'll do that later. We're going to melt the Vaseline. I realize you can't see it, but that's why I've got gloves out here so that I can tip it up and show it to you. Yeah, we got a little water in here. It's sparking a bit. But don't use mom's kettle. You know how many hours I scrubbed to get the Vaseline out of her, out of her kettle and off of her spoon? This is one thing I personally carry in my pack. Um, your cook pot grabber. Yeah, it's a little mammal. Sorry, um, This one, you got a different type off of Amazon. I found a different style off of Amazon. So I'm going to completely liquefy this, and it's sparkling and... Yeah, because we've got water in there, too. You know what? What is the handle called, do you know? Um, Camping kettle grabber? I'll have to. I don't know. You have to look it up online. I put decided to put the gloves on just in case that thing decides to be a problem because of its yeah. spitting. Because of its it's spitting. No, that's your water. Okay, yeah. I think. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's almost completely melted. Yeah. You want a picture down in there? Okay. Okay. Um, it's completely liquid. And I don't know that we could tip, we might be able to tip it up a little bit. No? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know how well y'all can see it, but we've got, by the way, you heat that too much, it will catch on fire. So we've got our liquid now. Outside over your fire, you know. Normally I do this outside, but I wanted to be able to get it on. It is a little yeah. more dangerous doing it over your fire because your fire has a spark, spark goes up in, and now you got a kettle fire. <laughs> so now what we do. Good voice of experience. I think I put too many in because yeah, I didn't clean out my 
No, it's not. It's going to work. Yeah, it's doing. So. Anybody for some cotton balls? Are they hot? Right now, he's packing all of them down into the Vaseline in the bottom of the So I'm squishing it through. It's warm on my hand and my glove, but it's not, I'm not burning. Okay. And there we go. Now you got a flammable glove. Now I got a flammable glove. That's okay. It'll last longer. It's well oiled. <laughs> so we've got our cotton balls that we can now, and these aren't quite as soaked. They're also still really hot. They're not quite as soaked as the other. Um, Okay, so now you know how to make them. And the thing is, though, if you use a oh yes, there you go. We should do that. Demonstrate the. Get that out of here so we don't have. So you flare out just a plain cotton ball with no Vaseline. It'll burn. But it's coming in a little bit. Of but you see how quickly it goes. And we've not let these cotton balls burn full length. We could do one outside. I just didn't want to leave it run that long in here. While we're eating, can, can, can we have someone else to come up and uh, strike one? Sure. There? You bet. Somebody that's not ever done anything at before. need to get that to I forgot. <laughs> you did. Okay. Um, so we're going to just take and fray it out. It is a little bit warm, not bad. Okay. So you want it at an angle where it's or this way is not as good, but well, you turn this over. Don't matter this way, but the metal part you want at an angle. I typically Matt likes it this way with I these. I like it up this way because then there's less stuff down there. Dad likes it that way. I like it this way because I can come up higher on the rod. Mm -hmm. So as long as you get the angle, and even if you're doing this rod with the back of a knife, mm -hmm. it's still the angle. the angle. It's still that. Not straight, but that angle. Anyway, go ahead and see if you can. Yep, you're welcome to feather it out a little bit more if you. All right. That's fine. Don't take the chance of burning your fingers. I'll do mine. <laughs> so those work obviously really, really well. Um, these were not quite, you can see, I mean, I can still kind of squish a little Vaseline okay. out of it. After they sit for a while, that will kind of, it hardens like a dust yeah. container. This one, yes. these have a little more Vaseline per cotton. You play with them. This is the way I like them, and you're welcome to come and look at it. What we want to do is uh, Mark, yes. A couple more people that want to, that want to try. All right. You bet. Come on up and let's try it. <laughs> so, so you, the angle, okay, and then we want to. Yep, get it flared. By the way, if the cotton ball, let me use one of these, better demonstration. So while you're working on that, I'm going to show what happens 
if you haven't flared it out, go ahead. Go ahead and try it. So if you if you don't flare it out. Yeah, get it right up here close. But you notice over here, I'm striking away the whole time. She's doing that. Hers lit. You'll never get that to strike. It it'll never, top. it'll never start because we didn't flare it out. If we fluff it out, make those little fine fibers, then it lights. You got another volunteer. Okay. <laughs> My hands are really getting Vaseline. Okay. It doesn't burn real well on the hands, though. No. No, nope. no anywhere on there. It doesn't matter the angle. Or yeah. the angle matters, not the The spot. angle of the metal work matters. But. So when you're, when you're striking, I see what you're doing. You're striking down. OK, you're doing it this way. You're trying to go really fast. Uh -huh. Try and get you a fast spark and then be able to just stop. Oh. Yeah. Now you got now you're getting some Almost. spark. Now you gotta get it. There you go. There you are. Not three times, fifty times, but we got it. So My the um I'm just going to peel that off and um, so the cotton balls, this method makes it super easy, but you still have to learn how to do it in other ways because you can only you can only uh, carry so many of these. And you really probably aren't going to be likely carrying any extra supplies <laughs> to make them. But in all honesty, at home, for starting a sto fire in the stove, yeah. you know what we use? Cotton ball. Yeah. They're cheap. Yeah. It's hard to get newspaper. Nobody, it's all electronic. And I didn't figure that you wanted me burning the tablets, so. <laughs> So that works. Okay, so now let's, let, you saw how easy that was. Let's do a. Give him a good one. Let's give you a little bit tougher project. Okay, so there you go. So now, go ahead and try that one. That's a little step harder. Put those at the back. There I don't go. think it's going to be any harder, but let's give it a try. <laughs> Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is why we practice doing this kind of thing. He had no problem with a cotton ball. I'm showing you how much easier it is with a cotton ball versus the pitch. I would like to try it. Then try starting leaves. Okay, there was somebody else I heard say she did like to try. Okay. Um, I was just going for this. <laughs> you can get it. Yeah, try it. Keep tri I was just making some, making yeah. some more keep, for keep somebody. Trying. Go ahead. Keep trying. Keep trying. Long, slow, and hard. Throw them sparks down in there. There you go. 
Okay. So it is possible, right? It is possible. So you need to believe it. And you can get an idea there. I'm going to let that one go for a bit. You can get an idea. Of, uh, they can repaint it. We're the ones painted it. Anyway. We painted it for them before, so. Doesn't want to go out. Here, I'll make some more. Okay. I'll make a few more. So. This actually works. We've had several people to come up here. It works, you all. God, you are amazing. Can I come? Yes, ma'am. If you can build yourself a shelter and build yourself a fire. You need the microphone, Melanie. You if you can yours. build yourself a yep. fire and you can build yourself a shelter, you will survive. If you are warm and dry. Um, now, that, and so, if you, but see if you're, it, it raises the morale. If you're out and it's wet and it's cold and you're shivering, you tend to get depressed. Hmm? Um, your scraper this is, right is your scraper. Oh, I have that's, to. So, I'll tell you what. Just, so, just how like do you said, not like see your fire? Before. What's that? that how do they not see your fire? Um, use dry wood. Dry wood does not put out smoke. Oh, okay. If you use moist wood, wet wood, you'll have a smoke plume. And keep your fire small. Tiny uh -oh. fires. Almost. Almost. Very far from the fire. Long, slow, and hard. Put, yeah, put your end of it yeah, right down. Yeah, set the end space. right down on there. It almost started. It should be no less. So you see why we're not in favor of matches? Because all the matches, if you get wet, you're in problems. But if you've got pitch, or you've got the boys were actually when that girls they were girl when they were out here in the woods, Matt discovered the fine cedar bark was would fray, and it almost looked like the jute twine when they yeah. frayed it out. We all started our fires with and they with cedar they bark. started it with cedar bark. So you need to learn how to use resources that are out there. The other things, while she's working, you know, you got a regular cotton ball. You want a Vaseline cotton ball. Oh. Yeah, next year. I didn't know next year. I was going to put it next to that. Yeah, the thing is, though, you need to learn to strike both of them separately. So the things that you look for, let's say that we've had rain for a week straight, and you're out and you need, you, you're wanting to get dry, you're wet, you're miserable. Where do you find something dry to burn? Anybody try ever start, try starting a fire with wet wood? Yes. It, it just, it can be done, but it's really, really hard. It's something I found and it, it takes it's somebody hard. that's... Work very well up here. Mm -hmm. Right um, here, you can feel a sharp lip. Try using it like that. Okay. He's telling her to use the side of that to strike it with. You're going to give it some force. So where you look to find something dry when it's been raining, go to the base of a tree. And as you're at the, looking at the base of the tree, especially, there That's you true. go. Wow. There you go. That's what I was trying to do. Wow. You go to, yes. you go to the base of a tree. And you find especially a fir tree. Fir trees are the ones with the real short needles. Fir trees have lots of fine little branches. Literally within, I mean, I've actually done it in the rain, where you got a big, big old fir tree, and you wade right in there next to the trunk of the tree, and you find some of those dead branches still on the tree. Those branches will be dry, even if it's currently raining. Because they're in, they're protected by the rest of the tree. If you pick anything up off the ground, it's going to be wet. Now you might be able to, once you have an established fire, you might be using some of those wet things. It's gonna make smoke. But it's gonna make more smoke. By the way, the amount of smoke 
that we've had from this in here, if we were out there in the woods, if I were just, let's say I was 10 feet inside the tree line, mm -hmm. and I was putting up the amount of smoke that you've seen here today with this coming off, you would never see it. The trees are going to disperse it, even if I'm only 10 feet inside. Now, if you start building a big, and putting on wet wood, and you're going to make a big smoky fire, I'm yes. There's an old there, saying. Yeah. Go ahead. There's a saying where white man builds big fire, he stands far away from it, <laughs> roasts on one side, freezes on the other. Indian builds little fire, sits close, stays warm all around. Okay. And also get the cook kit and show off. Um, so. Put a cook kit, the size of the cook kit. You don't need a huge fire to put a cook kit in. See? Yeah. You got yours handy? Yeah. I guess mine's You don't want to so. buy a camping set that has, it's like a, you know, yeah. a 10 or 12, 14 piece set. No. Forget it. There's the entire total sum of my cook kit. I got this one and it came with two cups and I set them aside because I didn't, wasn't going to carry them. And I actually have started carrying them because they're super nice. I can, I can boil water, put it in water. here, and have tea, and I can make my soup. And this plastic does not let the heat through. I'm not sure how it does it. But I can have boiling hot water in here, and, and there's no heat on the outside of them. But so, very simple. He's got a handle on his. The problem is that handle gets really hot if it's sitting over the fire. But he has. I have insulated. Insulated. He gloves. Thermal gloves. And so, literally, I don't know if you boys saw it, when we were out there camp out, I got this glove, and uh, I take my kettle off the fire, and I'm eating, Hold my kettle like this. Or I can set it on a rock and eat out of it that way. You've also, you this can is, also use these. These are wool. Yeah. And, it will, and so they It don't, will still get hot. It, it still gets, gets warm, hot, but, but you're not going to hold it forever. You're just yeah. moving it. You've got a handle. You can grab your cook pot. I wish mine had that. This way, he doesn't have the handle. Ours are a little different. I'm gonna make one for me. Um, there's how I do it. I mean, I have a handle here, but this is what I typically do because this has been sitting off to the side and it is a little loose, but it stays on. And you can see so you cook your meal, heat your herbs, whatever, make your tea. And you've got. Um, the other one is stainless steel, right? And the other one is. That one is stainless yes. steel. This is titanium. Titanium. And it the same. Titanium is lighter. Titanium is yeah, way lighter. Less. This weighs like half. Steel? Um, I think stainless steel is less longer than. I think yes. it probably would. I think it probably would. Matt. What was the question? Yeah. All the stuff you put in the can. What did um, you put in there? Oh, here's your Yeah, candle. you don't want to let, you don't wanna go, let uh, sp space go to waste. Um, so the two cups that I talked about that go in here, and a chintzy foldable spoon, which I'm planning on replacing because it does not stay locked. So you go to do something, and it just does that. Um, and my cayenne bottle, because it fits in here. We talked about that yesterday um, with for wounds and whatnot. I carry a full. We don't eat the cayenne. I carry you a full, carry full set of silverware, yeah. although 99% of the time a spoon is all you need. Yeah, a hold spoon it together. is, you, can, you stir with it, you eat with it, everything. So, and mine doesn't fit in there because they're slightly too long. Salt. You know, so pill now, bottle. the next question, I cooked my meal and I burn it because I'm not used to cooking on fire and, and I've got a little bit of, it, it cooks fast on a fire. It does, it cooks way faster on a fire. So you've Also tastes it, better by the way. And you've got stuff stuck in here. Am I going to pack dish soap and a Brillo pad and um, an SOS pad to clean my cook pot? You're going to boil it out. No, neither. Hey, I'm not going to boil it. This lady back here, Burl, 
How would you do that back home? How would you wash them out? Are you talking to me? To clean. Burl. To clean them. How would you wash out? Um, we need the microphone. How would you wash out? We, we did this at, um, at when I was on the Girls Island. I went up into the hill, and they had a little creek running by, and they washed all their stuff in the creek. And what did they use to do the Brillo pad job on the burnt stuff? Can you tell me? Rock, sands, or charcoal? Sands. sands Rock, yeah. yeah. Rocks. She's right. Rock sand or charcoal, and it works better than dish soap. Better than dish soap. Thank you, Beryl. Ashes do too. Uh, yes. If you made a fire. Right. You can use the ashes. Yeah, anything abrasive. That's how I clean my. So you just take it. You take your cook pot down to the creek. Grab some mud and sand out of the bottom of the creek. And start scrubbing. Yes. All right, quick question. Out. Yes. I saw that Matt had taken out salt. Uh, what salt would you recommend? Is there any salt that is available? Melanie well needs the mic for that. Come on up here, dear. Iodine for is not bad. The, the, them pulling it back out of the salt is one reason there's thyroid problems big time. They've replaced Morton's salt, iodized salt, with Morton's sugared salt. Um, because now people will eat most. look at the ingredients most. on the salt before you buy it. You will find most of them have either, it will say dextrose, or it will say... Um, I forget the other It's white. It What's the other one? It, out. it also I makes forget. you want to eat more because it's not as salty. Dextrose and it tastes or better. It's sweet. Yeah. Um, so what we did years ago was we went to the Himalayans pink salt. And we used that for a long time. And then my husband got into black mold and he started having issues. He, well, he nearly died from the black mold infestation that he sprayed a house to kill it. And when you I kill mold, the shrunk. spores just burst and he never used anything. And so he and our older son nearly died from that. Um, but he had a lot of gut issues, like leaky gut issues. And then I started showing those same symptoms and I thought, I wasn't around that, so why am I suffering from this? So I went um, to searching and I couldn't really find anything. You know, this is not transferable to somebody else so much so. But one day in school, Matt said to me, Mama, I want to look at the salt crystals under the microscope. And I said, oh, I'll tell you what you'll find. Salt, sodium crystals are the only square thing there is Naturally. out in nature. Naturally. And so I said, Let, uh, yeah, let's do that. So he put it under the microscope, the Himalayan pink salt under the microscope, and there were a few little square pieces of sodium, but there was a lot more shards, like glass shards. And it's the crystal of the stone that they're pulverizing to get the salt in Himalayas. And so we did some investigation on it. Those little shards act like gr glass and you cut, they lacerate the... Put that pink salt in a glass, a clear glass or a jar, put water in it and stir it up. And you and can see, see how it. much dissolves and how much doesn't. Yeah. And so we got off the pink salt. My issues went away within a few months. Mark suffered with it longer. We went to the Redmond salt because when we look at that, which comes from Salt Lake City, uh, Utah, um, they harvest it there out of the edge of the Salt Lake. Um, Matt and I looked at that under the um, microscope and there were a few little pieces of sand amongst a whole bunch of little square salt pieces. So that's the one we recommend to those who want um, good salt is the Redmond's Redmond's salt Redmond. from Redmond, um, Utah. -E yes. Okay. Also, I had uh, heard that Celtic salt is good for you as well. Uh, what would you all say as far as Celtic salt? Some of us probably never heard of Redmond before. Redmond's? Redmond's is your square, so it's a good sodium if you want sodium. Um, the Celtic salt, is we a had, sea salt. it's a sea salt, and it was just clumps. 
it was clumps, which wouldn't be bad because the sea has all the trace minerals in it that you uh -huh. need. Um, so it's not just going to be sodium, it's going to be a lot of trace minerals as well that are actually really needful in our body. Um, I actually have a rundown of everything that the deep sea water holds, um, has, and it's, it's um, the same as good blood as far as mineral count. So the Celtic sea salt would be good as well. Okay, thank you. She's got a question back there. Question back there. Yeah, just a comment. Uh, yeah, someone told me about that. I did buy some, but it tends to absorb the moisture. Yes, it does. So, mm -hmm. so periodically, you got to stick it in the oven to dry it out a little bit. Yeah. To because I keep it so I, can, I ground it myself. Grind it myself. One thing I wanted to show, I, we never demonstrated Melanie's little Walmart special yeah. striker. I wanted you to see it actually does work. Um, my hands are so Vaseline. <laughs> Squeeze it tighter. <laughs> okay, now, now. Sit it down there. Look under it. Maybe I should try a cotton ball. I've used these. Um, my hands are so covered in Vaseline, I'm so slick, I'm having a hard time hanging on it to it. I want a few clean shavings. Some clean shavings. These have been burned. That means it's burned up a lot of the, the uh, pitch, the sap that's in there. There we go. It, hey, Walmart do have something that works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it, it just, yeah, it's not going to give you as many fires. So what we want to do is, uh, first of all, you come see us. We've got a few of the flint rods there if you want those. And what we want to do is go outside. There are two fire rings. Um, if you don't have a them. knife, let us know. I don't have a whole lot of extras, but we can share. We'll let you share with knives for making. One match fires. We're going to work on one match fires. We've worked on this. Okay, cotton ball is a whole lot easier, especially if you use a match, which matches work on cotton balls real well. But the reason we like to go with the one match fire is it teaches you how to gather and get the little things and to successfully do it. Get an established fire. By the way, if you fail on the first match, we will give you another. The idea is what I've done is pull. I give everyone three matches to start with and okay. have them practice striking it on on the rocks. So I gave you three matches to practice striking. Are you going to have them strike it on rocks or the box? Oh, um, either way. Oh, that's the not. The, that's not a. Yeah. That's full of vessel. And then we give them one one match to light the fire. Sometimes it takes more than that.